Hello and welcome to the first New Toy Tuesday of 2020, an occasional slot where I look at something new and whizzy, and in this case I mean whizzy quite literally as I'm dicking around with some Tamlight Starlight whiz enabled LED lamps obtained at the end of 2019 from CEF. Indeed I've been meaning to make this video since Christmas, but it's only with the recent UK lockdown as a result of this Covid-19 bother that the business has been mothballed, allowing me time to finally staple this thing together. I don't know about you out there, but we have a five level alert for the current business operation ranging from five, business as usual, to one, we are dead. We're currently on alert level three, emergency call out only. I guess we'll just have to see whether things deteriorate and we drop to alert level two, or if we can knock back to level four and return to some semblance of normality in the coming weeks. Anyway, today I'll be looking at three variants of this product, the integrated downlight, the GU10 lamp, and the GLS style lamp with a traditional B22 bayonet base. I was personally interested in this product because I have this 3D wall thing in my hallway. It's made from MDF and I bought it in 2012. There's a link in the description to the site I used. Back in the day, I built this Conti board surround and fitted three GU10 lamp holders within the thing to cast some light down it and highlight the texture of it. If I were doing this project today, I'd use an RGB LED strip across the top for an even light, but such wizardry wasn't so accessible back then, so I went with what I knew. Over the years, various lamps have been employed in lighting this thing up, including in recent years some of these cheap RGB lamps and can be set to a specific colour via a remote control. These are early example RGB lamps and they're not great to be honest, the, the brightness is poor, the viewing angle is narrow, they have no memory and they go into disco mode whenever powered up from cold rather than remembering the last colour they were set to. And last November one of the three failed and started flickering which all meant that it was time for something newer and a bit cleverer. And in one of my forays into my local CEF I picked up their Get Smart Get Connected catalogue wherein was listed the Tamlight Starlight GU10 lamp, ideal for my purposes. So let's have a closer peek. First up let's talk size and you can see that this lamp packs more meat than your average GU10 and as a consequence it won't fit into most fire rated enclosed cans. In my case that's not a problem as my fittings here are open backed but this is a limitation to consider if you're looking to retrofit these things. That's the only real downside though, well that and the fact they misspell the word colour on the packaging which gets on my ruddy tits as we're well outside of Trump turf here, but let's keep it upbeat and concentrate on the advantages. 16 million colours and 64,000 whites? My god can there be that many shades of white? I mean I know there are variants, I only have to look through my own underpants drawer to see the crisp white of my new Asda Wifrance fading through a curiously yellowing spectrum of older pairs and into a, a deeper shade that the likes of Dulux would perhaps optimistically describe as autumn white if they were ever unwise enough to try and market it as a paint colour, but uh, 64,000? <sighs> quite remarkable. Incidentally, if uh, RGB isn't your cup of tea, just find the page again. This lamp is uh, also available in just the white form for a few quid less. As you'd expect, uh, this thing works with the usual crowd of useless digital assistant products, but uh, one nice thing about these is that they are all hubless. Unlike my old Philips Hue lights, these connect to the network individually and directly. No centralised hub is needed. These GU10 lamps I've already fitted, paired and got working and in fact they've been in for about four months now, so I'll show you how they work and then we'll look at the setup process with the bayonet lamp that I haven't used yet. The three individual GU10 lamps I have here are grouped together in the Wiz app under a virtual room called Hall, seeing as they're in my hallway. From the app I can change the brightness or I can uh, set a scene. We're currently on the Mojito dynamic scene which I feel has good spring-like colours that are quite apt for this time of year. There are lots of other built-in scenes though, uh, let's switch to party for example. Okay, uh, I can adjust the speed of any given scene, so let's, uh, let's rave this up a little more. Oh yes, a few more glasses of the old Vino Collapso and I can see myself out here throwing some shapes to this tonight with a bit of 80s house music on, jolly good. Uh, what else we got here? Let's select fireplace. Super stuff. Why? One can feel it warming the old cockles as we speak. Oh, don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll have a closer look at this app uh, shortly. 
what else do we have here? Uh, we also have some progressive scenes. So if I select Wake Up, and this scene opens with a low reddish light that gets brighter and whiter over the course of half an hour. You can set schedules to automate operations. So if you have this in a bedroom, for example, then you could set it to activate in this manner when your alarm clock goes off. Or you can ask your rubbish voice assistant of choice to kick off operation if it happens to be in the mood to respond properly. We also have basic whites, of course. Warm white, daylight, cool white, night light. So you can set, select your basic whites if pretty colours and dynamic scenes aren't your cup of tea. You can also create a custom colour. Let's say I want to, want it to I'm feeling in a, a blue mood. Let's go for a, a deep blue. There we go, it's almost purple, that, isn't it? I do like that. So that's all very long good. There doesn't seem to be any way to create your own dynamic scene. So you're sort of st stuck with the ones that they provide, but there are plenty of, there, of them on there. So, uh, you know, you can, you can select something you like the look of. Under the settings, you have options such as selecting whether or not the lights come back on after a power cut, whether you want to invite guests to have control, and whether the last pattern or colour should be restored when switched on or if they should default to their white operation. In my case, these lights are on a physical switch, and of course, with power removed, they're knocked off the air. This sort of lamp can be left permanently powered with control of them from the app or via an optional remote, which I do not possess. Dimming is all done from the app or remote. These sort of lamps are not suitable for use with dimmer switches. We've seen that we can group individual lights to work together, but the GLS lamp that I have here, I'm going to add as a standalone lamp onto my uh, Wiz app, so we'll see how easy that is to do. I'm going to plug it into a lamp holder here and turn it on. And I, I think it, uh, out of the box, it comes in sort of, it, it operates in pairing mode, so I shouldn't have to do any faffing about with that, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm just going to change as well my Fortnite screen here to my tablet. Do, 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 do. Oh, technology works, kind of. Let's open up the Wiz app, which refuses to go landscape. Oh, well, never mind. Now, uh, you probably can't see this too superbly, but uh, what I have here, this says hall, and this is the one room I have set up at the moment, uh, which is my hallway with my three GU10 lamps uh, set up there, currently unavailable because they're powered off. So we're going to set up a new room here for this light, which is obviously operating in, in a different room. So I'm going to press the Add button. I'm going to add a room. Get a room. And it gives us a, a list of rooms we can choose from. I'm going to go for... I, I could go for office, but that's so boring, isn't it? Let's go for bar. I like the sound. Oh, I've done balcony. Let's go for bar. This is the bar. So we now have two rooms, hall and bar, and there is no light in this room yet, it says. Where's me, me hoofa doofa? Let me zoom in on that a little bit. There is no light in this room yet. Well, let's add one, shall we? Add a device. Uh, what type of device are you looking to add? And there's various devices on here. Light, smart plug, Wi-Fi switch, retro connector. Oh, that sounds funky. I don't know what that is. I like the sound of that. Wizmote, motion sensor. Well, obviously, I'm going to go for light. Please enter your Wi-Fi password. Oh, I'm going to have to block this out, aren't I? Password entered. Now we have the choice of smart pairing or manual pairing here. I'm going to go with smart pairing. Power off your lights. Power on your lights. Tap on start. Power off. Power on. Start. Searching for lights. Please don't power them off. Let's get to a Kind of a cool white colour. It's very bright. I've got a blob in front of my eyes now looking at that. Alright, and it says it has found a light. It's got just a picture of a lamp up there, which you probably can't see because the, the light's reflecting on the screen, isn't it? This is very ill thought out, this presentation. Let's select that. So, yes, that's our our lamp that we want. Finish. Uh, select an icon to represent the light fixture. Again, you don't know how well you're going to see this, but you have options of desk lights, projectors, ceiling pendants, etc. I'm just going to select the default one that's there and say done. Right, and there we go. We now have, if I zoom out, controls over this light from our touchscreen here, so I can alter the brightness. Let's see what the minimum brightness is. That's the minimum brightness. So 
open it back up. We're on the daylight setting at the moment, but uh, let's switch to warm white. Jolly good. Night light. And because this isn't RGB, we have the same colour selection and themes that we had on the horn outside. So if I want to select, well, let's select Mojito again, shall we? Because that was the one I had going out there, which introduces a, a, a greeny colour into it, um, sort of pulses it around a, a white and green, which is, again, it's very refreshing for this time of year. Um, deep dive, I'm guessing blue. Jolly good. So all these same options that were there before are now here again. Let's integrate it with my Amazon Echo. Right, I took about two or three minutes, which I've edited out of course, because it's very boring watching me stabbing away at my phone screen there. Uh, but I've gone into Alexa, added, um, went into the skills, searched for a new smart lamp. Uh, under the other option, because it's not a Philips Hue or a TP Link or any of the brands that are listed on there. Uh, it went off and found it straight away, uh, and it's, it's added it, so I should have voice control now. Alexa, turn off bar. Okay. Marvellous. Alexa, turn on bar. Okay. Alexa, set bar to red. I found more than one device Asshole. with a name bar. Please give them unique names, then run discovery again. Or, create a group if you want to control them simultaneously. Oh, damn it. I don't know why that is. Alexa, set bar to yellow. I found more than one Alexa, cancel. The name this is the trouble with this voice control stuff. Uh, it's just... No. All that thing does is act as a glorified light switch and it can't even do that reliably. Take this thing flashing away here. Alexa, turn off Nano Leaf. Sorry, Nano Leaf light panels is not responding. You stupid son of a bitch. An error has occurred, it says on there. It's just so temperamental, this smart stuff. I'm really not a fan of it. So yeah, I'll use it myself, but there's no way I'll put it in for customers. Not unless uh, they want me to just do the basic wiring and they're prepared to take on the uh, the support and the maintenance for themselves. I don't want to be called back to a job where someone's echo, like mine, has stopped doing what the customer expects it to be doing. The downlight I have here is the white version, not the RGB one, although uh, that is an option. Comes with a white bezel. But polished chrome, brushed chrome, brass, and even black bezels are available, according to the catalogue. Let's get this out, shall we, and have a closer look. A nice unit. Uh, IP65, low profile, fire rated, 550 lumens, and the colour output is selectable on this white model from 2700 Kelvin all the way up to 6500 Kelvin. We've got uh, a detachable connection enclosure here with push fit connectors. Which way around does that go? There you go. Uh, and it's got uh, room there to accommodate two twin and earths going in. Although the, uh, the unit itself is double insulated, so it doesn't actually require an earth. Yeah, very nice. Again, if you were going to kit out a room with these, you'd group them together with the app so that they all work as a whole. A couple of things to quickly finish on then. If we go back to the catalogue and find our page. This stuff is also available in tape form, so you can do your custom build projects with your RGB strip tape there. Uh, and I mentioned about the, uh, the retro connector earlier. That's this thing here, as it turns out. It's an inline driver which allows you to smarten up a dumb lamp and bring it under app control or group it with a wider scene. Oh, it's windy out there today. Uh, we've also got, uh, we, obviously we've look, been looking at the, the B22 bayonet lamp today, but they are also available in the E27 Edison screw form. And there you have it, some interesting tech to perhaps play with while we all sit around waiting to catch the lurgy. Maybe I'll finally get around to finishing that pat testing video I started last September. Watch this space and uh, good health.